everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. This is another question, but it's more like news in this kind, but it's it's question that is showing news. They had a collab, apparently, uh, 4 p.m. PDT, etc. when this came out. And the video is currently unavailable. Maybe they privated it for other reasons. Maybe they just removed it because it didn't fit with, you know, time slots and stuff like that. Copyrighted music. It could be again. Her just dance streams just get don't get privated. So I don't know. Uh, it could be music stuff because if you remember correctly, there were some issues in the past about, you know, copywritten stuff getting getting her her stuff removed from sony music entertainment etc i'm not sure if it was her i believe it was rosemi who got it last time it might have been another person but I, if i remember correctly it was rosemi who got the copyright strike uh no yeah copyright strike thanks to um sony music entertainment which is interesting that's odd. i don't think dopio private is vod but what about fanana nope you can still see it on fanana's channel on dopio so it's only rosemi who privated it she might have had copyright music turned on yeah, that's one of those things. Like sometimes if you have music turned on, that's not on like a uh, streamer mode or something like that. It could be copyright. Tied for Fortnite stream overlaps with her membership stream. Maybe she just needs to put either one, either or. But I think it's more copyright. It's it's a little bit too conspiracy theory to think there was something else wrong with it. Here was the Fortnite grand return. It was on the 21st. So it could very well be that copyright music was on there. YouTube does have a feature there. You can remove the copyright music only. And it goes through like a special AI thing that they have that will remove the background music and will leave your voice there. It may be a little like tinny and a little kind of messed up voice, but it will leave your voice there. And here is all of uh, Rosamie's stuff. None of it showed none of the the because uh, it would have been around ASMR and around Grand Theft Auto. So none of it showed the one day and seven days ago. None of it is showing, of course, which is an interesting thing to see. Uh, but more than likely, like I said before. Copywritten music was the reason. The Beast, the Beast will demand another wave and another wave and another wave because the Noth has not done so well lately. Uh, so that I wouldn't bother auditioning even if you're just trolling. I troll auditioned last time. I'm going to keep troll auditioning every single time. They're probably going to deny me because the troll auditions are troll auditions. I never actively want to, uh, unless they fix things, I'm never going to actively uh, positively try to get in there. I'm not even going to try to do it as a whistleblower. I am just going to troll. Why? Because they don't deserve my, well, they deserve only trolling time. They don't deserve any actual effort for this because they don't put any actual effort into their talents. The talents are the ones doing everything. The talents are the ones actually doing the work. They're the ones actually putting the effort to make things better, to make good content, to make things entertaining. And the company is just like, well, as long as you roll in the money, we're going to treat you well. But if you don't, then we screw you over. That's what pisses me off yeah all despite the wave debuting dd doesn't care about its livers to them they're just numbers and money bags like i just said and fans they will support so long as you leave niji have niji by your name an example being the russell tuber all the niji fans were supported mint left because she's on the good terms with doki now and collab with her during the event if anyone willingly auditions for them seeing the bs of the company and fans have done all this time Got to gain a moment of exposure and clout they can keep after leaving. They shouldn't be surprised when they don't get any sympathy or real support. I agree with that statement. Like, if you're doing it for, I mean, it's fine if you want to do it for clout. Like, going in and leaving. But you might still get a lot more haters than anything positive. It reminded me of something. In one of Reen Penrose shorts, she talked about how idol debut streams are rescheduled, are scheduled to not clash with any other talents anniversaries or birthday events. This is in order to give these three special events all the space they need. If I'm not mistaken, Hololive does that too. When someone is streaming, in fact, I've seen it happen in Hololive. When someone is streaming, when they're having a regular stream, and uh, then a special event comes up, like a big 3D live, a, an anniversary live, anything like that, they end their stream before that live comes out. JP, I've seen it happen across the generations. It's not just their generation. Across the generations. EN does that too, across the generations. Because they know anniversary ones, 3D lives, the, the uh, music lives, they are big events and you want as many people supporting them. They'll either end their stream before that or they will raid the stream in order to bring their community to that to share the communities because that's the way that it works. That's the best way to do things. And that is a way to support your senpai, support your kohai, support anybody that's in the same same community, same group. Might sound like a yeah, duh thing to say, but as we can see, Nietzsche isn't doing that. To them, these debuts aren't special. Neither are their anniversaries, birthdays, 3Ds. They're just money makers and not good ones at that currently. If you've seen Star Wars, think of the comparison between how Anakin treats his clones versus how Pong Krell does. Yeah, basically, it's just, it's unfortunate the way that they um, 
treat their livers, but if you want to go in there, it's up to you. So I want to cover a little bit of Hololive stuff because Hololive is also one of my passions. I do enjoy Hololive. I enjoyed Nidhi Sanji when they were still good and I enjoy Hololive now. Uh, Princess Party first gen 3D Live is going to be happening. Um, they're all four of them. Unfortunately, Mel isn't there right now because, you know, the things that did happen with Mel. Uh, they are going to be there. Uh, this is what was hiding behind the mysterious stream on the Hollow Channel. Uh, it's pretty much Gen Group 1 group anniversary, considering four of them debuted between first and second. I guess it falls uh, quite well that they described when the reduction of 3D live streams was announced. The question mark is a video rather than a stream. Probably a music video. The, this made me uh, realize it was uh, the first from three years ago. This is, um, they're going through it. They're going through it and doing it because May 28th, 2024, this time I'm making sure to look at the things that are written here in the actual, you know, the dates going on. How Live First Generation 6th Anniversary Live, June 1st, 2100. Japanese time, of course. This year's anniversary, we'll be gathering together as a group of four instead of solo. To all the fans of the first generation, please wait. In fact, it's surprising that it didn't exist before. It's so exciting to get together like this. It's just the four of us to sing and dance. It will be streamed on the official Hololive channel. And then people here are saying, you know, um, thank you. Finally, I've been waiting for this. How long has it been since we saw the first gener generation group perform live together? Uh, this year, let's get excited together with the first generation members and their fans. Of course, this is a big thing for all the fans. Everyone, you know, of course, is being happy. You're going to have haters and things like that, but everyone's being happy. But they're, but the, the special part is they're being happy in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. It's a little early, but congratulations on Hololive's sixth anniversary. Looking forward to the first generation live performance. Spotlight has just been turned on. When I saw this post, the song started playing in my head. Thank you as always. So yeah, just a little bit of positivity with Fubuki, uh, Matsuri, Hachama, and of course, Aki Rosenthal. All wonderful singers, all wonderful people in a company that at least right now, as of right now, is treating them very well. Michi uh, did a collab with Fillion, the crazy, crazy Fillion. Maybe the closest we got to Michi cross paths with Doki. Of course, Michi, Doki, all those, they're probably going to contact each other eventually because they're both big streamers at this point. And it would be good for Doki to expand uh, her horizons, expand her friend group, which is what Doki's trying to do right now. And so is Michi. So, of course, Doki doesn't actively go after people, like go to try to get collabs immediately when they start debuting because, I, from my perspective, Doki wants to allow them to have their community, allow them to have their space. Then when they want to, you know, maybe a month or two later, they can go and ask as well. Stated elsewhere, if they want to collab, they will do so when they want to. People are saying similar things about Mint and Matara. At this point, starting to feel more like stirring the S rather than genuine speculation. I'll welcome it again if it happens, but she and Kudo don't intersect paths with, with Doki Bird that much. Uh, happy to get Matara too. Uh, Matara and Doki didn't didn't intersect very much either um, in Niji. So it's just right now that they're indie and they're both big and they're both ex Niji. There might be a point in time later on when they will be looking for a collab, but let that be them. Don't try to force that on anybody. Don't try to force that on, uh, you know, anyone like they, like you were trying to do with Matara Mint and all that kind of stuff. And people out there were trying to do it. Not anyone here, but people out there were trying to do it. Twitter needed sisters don't attack Michi as they did with Doki when she collabed with Fillion. At this point, they still want to attack others based on collab with Fillion. They might as well attack the entire rooster roster of uh, WrestleTuber. Exactly. It's like... Uh, it seems like Doki wants to make collab with X Niji Grand Style the rest of the next event. They're probably going to do some sort of collab eventually. But of course, let Michi, uh, Doki, Mint, all of them decide on their own. Uh, speculation is good. Speculation is not bad. Uh, until, you know, it starts becoming like forcing them to do what you want instead of letting them do what they want. This is a person that I've covered before. Urakate, which is copying an actual artist called URCT, which is an actual artist who does actual art and stuff. This person feeds their stuff into an AI art algorithm. He even, as I said in my video talking about him, he even uh, goes through the whole part. Where I, the one that I mentioned that Crony uh, gets attacked by an AI artist, it's that specific video. Uh, he goes through, puts everything inside of, you know, AI art algorithms, like you can see here, there's like, it looks like it's a fingernail over here. Like the, the hands look strange. You know, it looks, it still looks cute, but the hands look strange because AI art can, AI can never get the hands right. Over here as well. Look at the, the hands right there. The, the, the definition, everything, you know, certain things look kind of odd when you look at them through the lens of looking through AI art. He has taken over, uh, using, uh, Gargura art 
uh, fauna art. He has basically used the tags that all these girls use for their art. And it says this person is impersonating a real artist, masquerades AI generic images copied in their style for real artworks. If I hadn't been a strategist during the Pacific War, I could have defended America, defeated America. The reason for your defeat is that you didn't know Japanese people can lie with all their might. It's what Japanese people are like. So yeah, it's just this person keeps trying to defend themselves up here. It's like, what the heck? Why do you think other people would act in a way that's detrimental to your interests? It's natural for humans to try to live smartly. He thinks he's living smartly. It's just like, it's not smart to do what you're doing. And he's trying to keep going, you know, and attacking and attacking and attacking. It's not going to work out for you. I can guarantee you that. Of course, Niji Sanji being the way that they are, having, you know, the people that they hire, which is, you know, low ink, low cost people. Uh, it's not necessarily the fault of the interns if they aren't directed to do exactly what they need to do because a lot of times you won't know what's going on behind the scenes um they have uh decided to forget the TikTok of selen basically that's what i'm going they forgot to remove the TikTok to remove because they try to remove all social media when they're terminated they forgot about the TikTok. goodbye selen we will miss you uh good luck selen they forgot her TikTok. you know all that kind of stuff and this is just um a little bit of a precursor to the good things that are happening for Doki overall. She has her, uh, you know, information out here. She has her basically 20, May 26th to June 1st. WrestleTuber was Sunday 26th. WrestleTuber After Party. Rust Kingdom Server. Apex Legends with Tenjin. So she marked it Apex Legends with Tenjin, which I guess was a no. Which basically was Tenjin was like, huh? <laughs> he didn't even know. For those of you who don't know who Tenjin is, it's Bonnever Bernaja. Just a little secret. Uh... Apex Legends right there. They have fun FPS and Raptor merch orders, Sandland. So she has a lot of things going on. And just to make sure that you understand, it's exactly what she actually has here. It's no fake. It's not anyone having like, oh, wishing that Tenjin was a part of it. No, this is true. This is absolutely true. And Tenjin, you know, the schedule is there. And uh, they said the artist, the artist's photo card deco of uh, Pochaimo has the artist here. You know, basically all that kind of stuff. It's fun seeing that they're coming back together. They're doing it together again. It's all coming up uh, Doki at this moment. Another VTuber bit is right here where Battle confirmed that he'll be getting his belt. I saw a few people talking about it and wondering. So it's nice confirmation from the man himself. We'll take a look at this small section here. And of course, we're going to give you the sound because of course we have to give you the sound. Sound is very important in this thing. Here we go. The beginning of the WrestleTuber 2024 Doki Bird hosted tournament WWE game. And let me tell you something. I went into this thing. No confidence whatsoever. Not a bit, not a joke, not like actual twin brother. He's not a content creator or anything. He's my literal twin <coughs> fraternal twin brother. Okay. So <clears throat> and he's he, he he's a reoccurring thing on, on, on the channel here. Um <clears throat> and he's real. Oh jeez. He's he's a real person with nothing to climb on. So I had to win. So we rolled the fucking dice that I would beat Battle 2 in the ring. And with Battle 2 lost, oh, he's God. like, thank God. He's like, thank God. Because if he won this whole fucking thing, he, he would have no choice but to fucking get like hired. <clears throat> um but we went, we went <laughs> through a lot of matches and I, I the battle and guys, I think some people were confused. I was never playing the game. I was never fighting actually. No, I, no, it was, the, it was AI, like AI. It was AI, yes. character. I did not fight. I did not have my hands on how it happened. It was literal max fucking luck, which is insane. I said a membership. I was talking a membership. I said, listen, I'm not gonna win this thing. I don't win fucking anything. I don't win anything. But I think the only time I win something is when it's the most random, stupid, like lucky turn of events that has nothing <laughs> yeah. to do with me whatsoever. And I fought my brother. I fought my mirror match, which was Octavio. Fought Octavio. Defeated Octavio. And then I just kept climbing and I just kept winning. Fought green monsters and Satan. <clears throat> I was just a man. And I would say Fillion was my mirror match, but Fillion's character was better at acrobatics than me. And the only reason reason I won was because my character was ripping the turnbuckles off the stage so the ref had to fix the stage so they missed the pin that was held for like six seconds. Why was my character just tearing the stage apart? What was his problem? My favorite fight was the Fuyu. Oh, I'll run it. It was just survive, survive for X amount of time and then you win. <laughs> but the funniest thing, the funniest thing is that when you man came out, when you man came out, their stats were exactly the same as mine. We were ah, both at the same overall stats. Equal. So why the fuck did my AI finally decide to shit the bed? It was like a 13 second fight and I just got destroyed i'm pretty sure you man's <laughs> stats were that's the same metal. as mine i that's think we were both metal. 85 i don't Freaking think from was, hollow starts. was purposely like juiced up to like just slaughter somebody i just naturally lost that quickly which is so funny after all this my ai is finally like that fuck it i mean you can't even write you can write this shit also i was just happy to be there i didn't know i didn't know i actually won something like you get like a, a belt like an actual thing i had no idea i was like oh that was fun bye everybody bye thank you and then Doki made a tweet and like oh yeah you get, you get like a you get like an actual actual thing being sent to you and i was like oh what the yeah i still get the belt i still get the belt it was always it was always gotta be sent it was just you man was just a bit of fun you man was just a bit of fun which i love by the way i love that so it was it was a really really fun event where you're the only i was the only hollow star left on day two yeah we got wiped out pretty quick poor shinri died instantly i had to kill octavio in order to succeed i killed my brother in order to succeed axel got slaughtered on the first round Gerard got slaughtered instantly and then so yeah
yeah, he gets to keep the the whole point of this was that he gets to keep the belt, which is great. I mean, she did say they would get one person as well, but not everyone's probably around for that. As uh, a concern came to the fact that Beto lost to Uman, but you know, it, Uman was just an extra. It was an extra. It was like like a, a, a you know final 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 boss type of fight. But Beto still got it because it wasn't actually a championship fight that they were doing. It was just a regular fight. I like about this clip is the fact that Bettle and Uman's wrestlers are both apparently had the exact same stats and Bettle lost in seconds. The whole WrestleTuber was already wild and getting this behind the scenes makes it even funnier. It does. It works for Bettle though. It works. It absolutely works for his thing because he always grabs defeat from the clutches of victory. He always grabs defeat from the clutches of victory. So that's one thing that Bettle has. And of course, I wanted to mention this to you guys. Just to preface this, because I kind of made sure to watch some of it beforehand so I can get the full aspect of everything he's saying because i'm going to be cutting through parts um we have uh sayu cyu which is a actual voice actor coming out here and talking about the things that he had to go through as a voice actor and in this specific place talking about ndas contracts what go through uh you know the fact that you don't have like non the only like exclusionary contract the only one that we have to be exclusive is if it's like a large brand deal like coca-cola or, you know, Walmart or whatever, a big brand that you don't want to also be doing things for the competitor, they'll put you in a specific brand deal for it. But other than that, you can do like Hoyoverse, you can do like Grand Blue Fantasy, you can do all that kind of stuff if you want, Withering Waves, all that stuff. Um, yeah, many CCs did not sign it after realizing the implications of it. Right, because why would you? That's just insane. Obviously renegotiate if a contract doesn't sit right with you. You know what I mean? There has also been confirmed follow botting that is pro Genshin on many Wuwa Twitch streamers. That I don't know anything about. Um, and if that is happening, that fucking sucks. They literally dropped Natlin news and quality of life upgrades the week of Wuwa's release. I mean, look, you might call me a Genshin dick writer or a Hoyo dick writer for saying this. Dude, this shit is planned out weeks or months in advance. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Absolutely like, very true. It's just unfortunate. I mean, like, it's I, true. Don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's crazy to me. Like, look, I get speculations. I get game theories. I get it. But when it comes to this type of situation, you're just stirring up trouble for the sake of stirring up trouble. Like, because I... <laughs> this is about a dude who made a video on him, uh, <clears throat> not specifically on him, but on, you know, voice acting and everything like that, saying, oh, there are so many contracts that you don't know about. Oh, there's so many things that is horrible behind the scenes. There's exclusionary contracts. There's NDAs you have to sign. There's all this blah, 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 blah. Basically, someone trying to, you know, without having anything to point to, trying to do that the fact that i just can't believe that this dude literally went like bro he did it he said he didn't have an exclusivity but he didn't say he, he'd renew his contract what are you a fucking what are you talking about and if that was the case if there was a thing where it was that they wouldn't let me renew my contract like they were like hey because you voice in Wuwa, you can't voice in genshin if they ever did that if for whatever reason, Hoyo or any company, whether it's Hoyo, Kuro, like any company I've worked with that literally would tell me it's like, hey, because you're working on this thing, you can't work on this thing. Um, you can't reprise a role. I would literally talk about it publicly because people would ask me, people would ask me, hey, how come you didn't come back for so-and-so? I'd be like, oh yeah, they told me I couldn't. They told me because I decided to do voiceover work for this thing, I couldn't do voiceover work for this thing. I thought. Look, I like both Genshin and Wuwa. See, that's the thing. That's what he's saying. That yes, most places, Genshin, Wuwa, uh, you know, Blue Archive, whatever, which whichever one you want to talk about, they will let you voice act for all these other places because you're not a you're not specifically a spokesperson for that. You are reprising a role. Once the role, once the game is done, their, your role is done. Same thing with Withering Waves and anything like that. Once your role is done there, you're done. You know, and maybe they'll bring you back for the role again if they're doing, you know, further chapter or anything like that. But they, from my understanding too, this is just my understanding. I could be very wrong. They, uh, that's what, that's what most voice acting, acting type of roles do. That's why you see actors in some ton, ton of different movies. You see voice actors in a ton of different anime in Japan. You see that happen a lot because they're not going to stick you to just one role and be like, oh, because you did a role for another company, we're not going to deal with you anymore. No, it goes based on your merit. If you have good merit and they like what you do, they're going to get you again. Here is some drama that I've read into a little bit before talking to you guys, because I want to give you guys a TLDR of the whole situation. I want to give you guys as much of a TLDR as I possibly can about the whole situation and um, 
give you guys a bit of an explanation. Hypervox is a VTuber in Australia. It's primarily a VTuber artist, or at least a person that was doing art for someone else. They got a charge back for 652 bucks, which affects your, your PayPal account big. Uh, Bim, it says, I don't know what to do. I'm under enough stress as it is now after being mistreated for months and now ha ha being pushed to defend myself because I'm being given no other choice. I'm under enough stress as they knew that. They knew my situation that they, they, they stole anyways, according to this person. They responded here, buyer beware. This whole situation is them having to delay their 2.0 debut because, uh, you know, they did, they, they're showing the contact. They're showing all the contract that they had, their meetings. Google meetings, uh, showing everything, all the, the, the talking that they had meant the, the fact that they mentioned, they both mentioned mental health days. They both mentioned trying to understand that there's mental health days that are going to happen. Pretty much this whole thing boils down to the person Hypovox, uh, was trying to do all these things for them, but fell behind for various reasons. This person says a lot of information was left out. Conveniently left out the part where it's ready day, no one showing up. I DM'd IME only to find out the manager never bothered to tell me they couldn't make it. Sorry, you're having to deal with this at the moment. You know, pretty much stuff like that. People saying, you know, it's it's not good to have this in the community. Uh, she called herself out. I'm not scared of you posting screenshots or anything. I know I acknowledge everything that I have said. I'm not perfect, but you don't have the moral high ground here, according to them. And the response to that was right here. Uh, this person saying here, which kind of put a, a nice summary, says, I hate to see conflict in this community, but I do think you got emotional, though. If you're running a business, you can't just block them after they give you money and respectively ask for edits to stuff they never showed up or work in progress of. That's true. There was some some uh, some overreactions, maybe to due to mental health, maybe due to other things. There were some overreactions there. Maybe there was some miscommunication, but the fact that she paid you on paid you on time every time and the work was delayed, apparently intended to be withheld until after her stated debut date. They had said they needed it by, just unprofessional, according to this person. Also, the memory thing is just a horrible business excuse. There's the, the response of the, the 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 person who, you know, this hype of Ox, was they had a manager to manage all their stuff. The man, They have bad memory things. They they mentioned to, to the other person that they had bad memory issues, that that's why they have a manager to be able to deal with the memory issues. The manager didn't help them with that enough. They do admit that, yes, they made some mistakes. They do admit that, yes, there were issues that were not dealt with properly. It's just mistakes on both sides, I think. Both sides are, are, are have errors, but the fact that there was no art given, at the very least at the time, that they needed it, because if a lot of people pay extra to have a deadline met, and I'm pretty sure this person paid extra too to have a deadline met. When the deadline is not met, that's when you have issues. Just talking from an objective point of view, I don't know either of them. As you can tell, I don't follow either of them. When you go order something at a shop, you don't need to constantly remind them or people would, wouldn't shop there. When you charge this much to have an entire terms of service, you're essentially running a small business. And most people can agree this is not the way to run a successful small business. Definitely deserve that refund if she can prove that you did indeed not deliver what they requested within those delays. It is never the customer's fault if the person providing the service had bad memory or things going on. They're paying you for what they initially agreed on not on all that extra stuff along the way and delays and things being messy. It is nice that despite delays and miscommunication, she paid you when you demanded it. I personally wouldn't have done that as well as many others. Hopefully all this parties cool down and it can be handled. And they went in with their side and this person, you know, took, a, took the thing with their side, said delayed the comms, tasked them with uh, reminding you with the deadlines you're responsible for. You shouldn't need to be reminded of the deadlines. Just being honest. Wanted to keep the comms until the last payment when, when I and most people can agree. They clearly state that they needed it by the late uh, May debut date and you agreed to it. Installments work by giving them the comm and then making payments as you decide. Otherwise, they could have just saved up and calmed you by paying it all forward. That makes sense. Finally, uh, very unprofessional. You gave them work that they were not satisfied with and you expected them to keep the profits after not delivering what was promised. That's the thing. That's why you, you like for people, places like VGen, you look at it. You say, these are the changes I want. These are the things that are going on. Can you please do this? I took a look at it. I don't like how the head moves or whatever. Can you please take a look at it? Believe it or not, when you're running work like this, you're supposed to be the bigger person and accommodate clients to keep the coming back to your business and also getting word of mouth. Uh, basically because the person blocked them after, you know, them complaining about, you know, things not being the way they promised. Whatever you have to show won't erase this. The most it can do is make people understand why you did what you did. Sometimes, of course, stress can do that. Sometimes, of course, people have anxiety issues like myself. Sometimes you can close yourself off for those issues, you know? Maybe a little bad for your situation, but doesn't change the fact that these things should have, shouldn't have happened in the beginning. Address all of this about the only thing that it excuses, the lay of the calm and everything else is still true. Neither side was an angel. Exactly. Neither side was an angel. The customer shouldn't have taken so long to send refs and respond to the artist. Uh, and in response, the artist shouldn't have been more should have been more strict and stern 
and also not block them to reach a peaceful compromise. Yeah, there were there were just too many things um, going on. It could be, it could have possibly been a culture clash. I don't know, but this just reeks of both sides not communicating correctly and both sides making mistakes. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.